I seen him every day, man. And it's just crazy that, you know, he really gone. You know, it feel unreal right now, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, Phil, he was the soul of the school. I just met Phil this year. I kind of rarely talk to him, but he was good to me and my sister. Where you at? It'd be like 8, 8.30, wake up, not here. School about to start. He be calling me all that, and it's just like, to think like, to just to think somebody actually cares enough to go out of their way to do that. And I know he did it for a bunch of other students too, but it's still, it's like, to think that somebody's actually there and like really likes to see you. And it's not even just, you know, like he really believed in me, you know. The brother, you, you, you breathed life, man. It was like, no matter where you went, no matter who you met, like it was always a positive, it was always a positive interaction. There was, I don't even think there's nobody I know that has anything bad to say about you. Like, you was just one of the realest dudes I know out here, man. You know, you cared about the kids, you cared about grown-ups, it didn't even matter who, whether they were ignorant or not, like, you just always show love to everybody. Phil is the person who you can go to to talk to about anything. Phil is the person to keep you on track, to put you back on track. Phil is the type of person to sit there and tell you when you're doing something wrong even if you don't want to hear it. But he'll tell you because he loved everybody and he wanted the best for you. Phil was one of the adults dedicated enough to showing me that, you know, I could utilize all benefits of, you know, a college education or high school education and, you know, my career as well and also the emotional aspect with you know, me, me losing other people in my life or me going through hardships on the day to day and him being there genuinely concerned for my well-being. And to see that out of somebody who had no obligation to connect with another person like that was truly amazing. Love never dies. And I think that says it all where Phil is concerned. Love never dies. And so that means the love that we have for him and also I know the love that he had for us. And I'm grateful because he really is a tangible example of what caring and loving and being concerned about your fellow man is. And so I'm so blessed to have met him. Um, definitely challenged to do my best always just because that's how it is. You know, we would go hang out after work discuss things about life, discuss things about work, discuss things about the youth that we work with. And he was invested in this program, man. He was invested in the school. And the biggest thing that I loved about him was the tenacity that he had and the care that he had in making sure that these youth that we work with are making the right choices and understanding and whatnot that the stuff that he has gone through himself um, helps him be a better mentor, advisor, and pretty much family member for the youth we work with because that's the first pillar of the HSRA family. <laughs>
What's up, man? Copy that. That's what I remember. Uh, we was at a uh, staff training and we went Whole Foods. I never go to Whole Foods. We had a whole conversation in Whole Foods. It was deep. We talked about politics, uh, religion. But what I remember most is just your heart for the young people. How even before the school year started, we was already strategizing how we're going to help our young people out. And after the conversation, it was just copy that. Um, so my ninth grade year, when I first got to HSRA, um, I was with my cousin and Leah and a whole bunch of other people. And we were by downstairs. And it was the first time I ever sang, because no one really asked me to like sing on the spot. And Phil was like, hey, and I was like, hi, I'm Lou Ray, da 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 like, why do you go to school here? I'm like, I'm a singer. And like, let me hear something. I remember one of my favorite memories, I think it was parent night, and you had a ponytail. Like, your hair was slicked back, and you had a ponytail, and it was in the back of your head. And I just kept laughing and laughing. And so I finally had to tell you that you looked like you could play for the WNBA. I don't know why, but the ponytail was just hilarious. Um, there's this time when I was supposed to be Phil to go out and if everybody knows Phil takes it forever to get ready so it was like 10 o'clock or something like that linked up with him and uh, we were going to we get ready to head out he's like man it might take me a while you know I gotta um, get my hair braided and I'm like oh man this, this dude got a lot of hair so you know I'm like man forget all that we just gonna go out he's like man I don't know man I don't know if I should go out with my hair like this I'm like bro come on so he jumped in the car, I'm not really paying attention to nothing, and uh, we got downtown. And for some reason, it was like a light breeze that day. And man, this man got out the car, and his hair was blowing in the wind and stuff, and man, we couldn't go nowhere without somebody being like, ooh, look at his hair, ooh, girl, look at him. And you know what I'm saying? Like, he just looked at me, he was like, I told you, man. And all I could think about was like, Man, I ain't never going out with this dude without his hair braided, twisted, something, because it was too much. Shot in the back, bullet went 
through three of my ribs, broke three of my ribs, and still lodged in my left lung right now. And uh, he drove me to the hospital, <laughs> breaking every law to get there. <laughs> At the same time, like he was looking back like, Sonny, yeah. don't you die on me? Don't you, you good? I'm like, man, just watch the potholes. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's like, you know, I wouldn't even be here right now. Wouldn't be in this school. Like, he said they had a position. Like, even though I brought him to the school and he graduated, he brought me back to work in this school. And now I'm here. Now I feel like, I feel like I gotta be here forever, type stuff. Because I, I know that's how he felt, you know? And my man was always positive, but like, always encouraging, uplifting. So if he's ever told you he cared about you, he really did. Like, we've been friends for 16 years, 17 years, and they ain't broke apart since. Like, not over no girls, not over nothing, like no money. Like, when I say this is my true friend, like, this was my best friend. I only consider myself having two. Whatever he said to you, you need to you need to hold on to that because it came straight from the heart, you know what I'm saying? Like my man's love with his heart. It's possibly something totally new to me. But I'ma figure it out because I know that's what you want me to do. And I'm definitely gonna stay steady. And you know I'm ready. Love you, bro.